Hello, and welcome to today's webinar, Take Your Outdoor Business to New Heights with the Agility to Prepare for What's Next. My name is Brianne Richardson, and I'm the Marketing Coordinator for the Apparel, Footwear, and Accessories Industry here at Oracle NetSuite, and I will be your moderator for today's webinar. Just a few housekeeping items before we get started. Your view of today's presentation is completely customizable. Feel free to expand or move around any of the widgets on your, on your screen. And as an audience member, your sound will be muted. If you have any questions or concerns, you can submit them via the chat feature. Just click on the Q&A icon located at the bottom of your screen, type in your question, and hit send. Questions directed to our speakers will be addressed at the end of the presentation. And if time doesn't allow us to answer your question, someone from NetSuite will follow up with you after the webinar. If you're having any technical difficulties, you can click on the yellow question mark at the bottom of your screen for our event help guide. But most of the time, these difficulties can be resolved by simply refreshing your browser. We will be sending you a recording of this webcast in a few days, and additional materials are also available for you to download in our resources list widget, and that looks like a green folder at the bottom of your screen. And now, I'd like to hand it over to our presenters and introduce Craig Harris, our industry principal for the apparel, footwear, and accessories industry at NetSuite, and Drew Williams, Chief Operating Officer at Point6. Go ahead and take it away, Craig. Thanks, Bria. Welcome to today's webinar. Um, we'll be discussing how to take your outdoor business to new heights. You know, in today's economy, the only constant is change. In order to meet that challenge is Businesses have to be ready for what's next, and being a next-ready business takes more than just strategy. It requires a new approach. Let me share with you how NetSuite can help you get there. Um, NetSuite is a global business unit of Oracle, and uh, this is a required safe harbor legal disclaimer, and I'll just summarize it for you. Um, you should not make any purchase decisions based solely upon the information contained in this presentation. We'd be happy to follow up with you with much more detailed conversations, presentations, et cetera. Um, just need to get that statement out of the way. Today I'll be giving you an overview of the NetSuite platform and its capabilities along with where our business is headed next. Also, we'll discuss the challenges that the outdoor businesses are facing as they prepare for what's next. We'll, we'll conclude today's presentation with our featured customer, Point6. We'll hear how Point6 is preparing their business for agility and growth to keep up with lead consumer expectations. Finally, we'll conclude with a brief Q&A to address any questions you may have. I'm Craig Harris, Industry Principal at NetSuite, and I'm focused on apparel, footwear, and accessories for fashion and for outdoor brands. I bring 30 years of retail IT solutions consulting experience to my job. I've been fortunate enough to work with a really wide spectrum of retail and apparel companies of all sizes, from, from the global giants to startups. And, you know, I've personally witnessed and taken part in the technology revolution that continues to advance our industry. I'm joined by Drew Williams. He's the director, he's the COO, director of operations of Point Six out of Steamboat Springs, and I thank you all for joining us today. These metrics emphasize NetSuite's capability and credibility as the number one provider of cloud ERP. We've been a pure cloud solution since our inception in 1998. We knew that in order to mitigate the pain associated with legacy ERP, we had to change the game itself. We knew it was time for software to truly be delivered as a service. NetSuite's scale and ability to execute are unsurpassed. We support everything from emerging companies to public companies through to some of the largest global enterprises. NetSuite is the fastest growing financial management platform in the world. As a result, we have over 40,000 organizations all running on the same version of the product. And almost every new IPO over the last several years is running NetSuite. That's really a testament to our innovation. NetSuite has been growing like this for years, and with our acquisition by Oracle in late 2016, we're not only going to continue this growth, uh, we're going to accelerate it. So rest assured that um, not only is our platform capable of this growth, but our ability to execute at these rapid growth levels has been proven many years over.
you know, the outdoor retail landscape is ever changing and it's really fast evolving. Today's emerging competitors are destined to be tomorrow's market disruptors. Next week, Cloud ERP enables retailers to focus on their business. We take care of the IT for them. Our unified data platform serves up real-time information to the right people at the right time for quick, informed decision-making. As you all know, running a successful business is about dealing with threats and opportunities. It's about putting your company and the people in the right position to deal with those situations when they arise. Every business has a different next. You know, for some, it, the next is global expansion. For others, it could be a new product launch or adding new sales channels, being ready for the Internet of Things. Whatever it, you know, whatever your next is, your business, you know, it really has to have the agility to shift with the expectations of your customers. Businesses must react in weeks and months, not years, in order to take advantage of opportunities or just uh, squash some threats. The company's future depends on, you know, your stage of growth and your industry. You know, whatever your next is, you have to have the systems in place, place to meet those associated challenges. Unfortunately, you know, most companies, this, this is what their business landscape looks like. It's a broken puzzle. The business platforms are very fragmented, siloed, inefficient. As a result, it, it's next to impossible for them to respond to constant change faced today. They'd have to replace many separate systems that are monolithic, systems that have different technologies, aren't easily integrated, are stuck on older versions from past customizations. Those customizations are probably or might have been created by developers who no longer even work there. Products have been sunset, et cetera. A lot of time it's easier not to touch anything and just add another standalone module, no integration. That results in more workarounds, more chaos. They have a huge mess in their hands and they're vulnerable to competitors because of it. True. Did uh, did point six have this kind of these kinds of challenges before implementing NetSuite? Yeah, definitely. We had a system that looked a lot like what you're showing there. And we'll get a chance to talk a little bit more about that later, but um, that it's a common theme that we hear from many of our, our retail partners is um, getting out from under this legacy uh, um, broken puzzle, as we like to call it, is, uh, is job one. You know, suddenly everyone has been preaching the cloud. We hear it in the trade shows. We hear it in the marketplace. We hear it in our, in our trade magazines all the time. Cloud has become the magical cure-all for that broken puzzle. As the cloud ERP pioneer, we, we understand the allure. We get it. Um, however, many of these cloud products were not written for the cloud. The owners have just taken their same old on-premise applications and hosted them on a server somewhere and then charge on a software as a service basis. The end results are the same as on-premise, though. They really, they really are. They have the same kind of integration challenges, the same kind of virgin log problems, and kind of mishmash of different user interfaces, et cetera. And the same results really manifest themselves. Data is fragmented, processes set in silos, there are multiple user interfaces, broken transactions, and there's no, there's really no single version of the truth. And that, that really hits home in businesses, and I, I've seen this play out myself, where we sit around a, a table and talk, and the, the various department heads are debating over the sources of their data rather than talking about the problems that they're trying to solve. And it's a, it's a paradigm we see over and over in the industry. That's what NetSuite is designed to address. Just a moment here. First and foremost is our philosophy. We were born in the cloud, we're designed to run in the cloud, and designed to run an entire business. NetSuite is cloud first and cloud only. We don't, we don't have an on-premise solution. Meaning it has all the tenants you associate with a real cloud solution. You can access it using any device, anywhere, anytime, as long as you have a connection to the internet. Consumer-oriented, it's easy for anyone to pick up and use without extensive training. It's fit for purpose and always up to date. I think that's a key premise. 
We're built on a single data source. Our unified data model is the key to enabling true business intelligence the way companies need it today. Our unified data model allows you to report and analyze your entire business end to end. And it's all in real time with no need to build complex data warehouses with several moving parts that many other products require. As they have multiple products on multiple platforms. They need a data warehouse to pull all that together. NetSuite's unified data model delivers unrivaled analytical capabilities on day one. Unified data model allows customers to define who is able to view, analyze, transact, um, what data across the entire ma enterprise, managing you know, security by functional area, by fields, companies, subsidiaries, and sites. Most other solutions, managing security means trying to coordinate access rights across multiple platforms and environments. It's, a, it's again, it's another, another part of that hairball. We avoid that entirely. And Net, NetSuite, our customers just get one login and they have the appropriate access to conduct their business. All of this is built on the Suite Cloud platform. NetSuite Suite Cloud platform offers unrivaled levels of personalization, customization, and development within a framework that ensures security, scalability, and globalization. What's more, it's built on to be up to date with the latest versions of software all the time. This enables a vibrant ecosystem of developers who know that they only have to develop their solutions for one version. They don't have to worry about all the different uh, access points because um, um, all the customers have access to their solutions on that same platform. Sweet Cloud is one of the most powerful and well-used platforms as a, as a service available with over 1,000 developers providing real solutions that are being used every day in business. All of them are up to date. There's no version lock to deal with, and there's only one version of the product ever. NetSuite provides functionality that businesses need to be successful. Financials, supply chain management, DRM, e-commerce, et cetera, et cetera. Coupled with our Built for NetSuite program, where our partners build their solutions on top of our platform, companies have everything they need on that same platform. And through all this, NetSuite itself is global. Every business is becoming more global and will need these capabilities in order to compete. This means not only being able to transact in different countries, but to be able to run on a platform that is available 24, 7, 365, anywhere in the world. It's secure, scalable, and always up to date. Unlike other platforms, NetSuite is able to handle the difficult task of going global with multi-books, multi-language, multi-currency, multi-tax compliance um, out of box. Sorry. However, having the right cloud solution is just a starting point. We knew we needed more. Uh, first, we wanted to make our customers happier. Second, we wanted to bring what we learned from other companies, our customers, to, to other companies that are making the same transformation. And third, we wanted to make it easier for our customers to consume NetSuite innovation. The NetSuite platform and built for NetSuite partner ecosystem delivers all the functionality uh, required to run your business. Um, you know, NetSuite offers a complete solution to support the modern retailer, ERP, CRM, omnichannel, HR, business intelligence, and the platform. But we don't just stop there because running a business requires more than just a foundation. Running your business requires ind industry-specific functionality and includes processes like contract manufacturing, global supply chains, wholesale distribution, multi-channel retail, and all the nuance required to deal with the incredible diversity of product consumption in the outdoor space, from clothing, such as style, color, size, to serialized electronics, parks, passes, fishing licenses, and even food. These vertical requirements are encapsulated in the NetSuite-based code, requiring fewer customizations and empowering companies to focus on their business, and not on that IT hairball. These business necessities are delivered by you know, user and role-specific dashboards, reminders, industry-specific KPIs, workflows, and forms. There are thousands of hours of pre-configuration built into the platform. Instead of paying an army of consultants to add or configure this functionality for your industry, they're, avail they're available from day one from NetSuite. 
They're built on our leading practices that reflect the thousands of wholesale and retail customers in your space already leveraging the power of NetSuite platform. It doesn't stop there. Through the Built for NetSuite program, we're implementing complementary core technologies from Oracle as well as other key SDN ecosystem partners. So that our solutions aren't just integrated, they're part of the whole product offering. That fits your industry and it's scaled for your business and it's built and vetted for by NetSuite from the start. Here we see an example. This is a merchandiser's role and dashboard. NetSuite delivers relevant business information, a job function straight to the dashboard. This data comes in the form of predefined click-through KBIs, headlines, data searches, reports, and reminders, all organized around a deep library of apparel and fashion brand leading practices. A merchandiser starts her day by reviewing relevant metrics. She, she needs to stay abreast of the business and help her organize her priorities and tasks for the day. It even reminds her when something critical needs her attention. All of this is available on day one of Go Live, lights on in action. Contrast this to a, the monolithic traditional ERP where you know, the users are supposed to build all this stuff themselves somehow, and, and one day, you know, on day one, that for them is a blank screen with some menu options. Do, you know, do what? You mean you know, sometimes it takes more than a, a year of implementation and all they get to show for it is a blank screen. That's, that's, not, a, that's not a great implementation experience and um, business users tend to be disappointed in the results. We're not resting on our laurels though. Business and commerce are dynamic and ever changing. And the rate of change is only accelerating. Old standard bearers fall to the side as new marketplace giants emerge. And we've seen that happen in the last 10 years in spades. Uh, more nimble startups chip away at the edges. Um, you know, the, just keeping pace with what's going on is hard enough, much less trying to take the lead and, and do some disrupting yourselves. And that's we, we get this. We have to not only keep pace, but we have to continue to lead the charge. We view this process as an ongoing relationship where we help you optimize your business on a continuing basis to meet your needs. You get to leverage the insights and techniques developed from a global community of similar retailers. All of these companies drive the innovation necessary to stay on the leading edge of the market. Continuous. That sweep never stops. It runs 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. It's continually updated with new capabilities and new partner enhancements. These enhancements are pushed out through two releases a year every year. All, Net all NetSuite customers are all running on the same release all the time. And this core tenet of our approach to the market is the engine that drives our ability to leverage the best of the best. It's vital that our engagement model allows you to continuously take advantage of these improvements too because your business and those of your competitors never stops either. This means as your business grows and changes, you can evolve and add business capacity and functionality over time. NetSuite comes to market with more than just industry-specific software solutions package, however. We have a dedicated team of seasoned IT, apparel IT industry professionals that leverage our leading practices and business acumen, from sales through implementation, ongoing support. And the end result is that our customers are more referenceable, up and running faster, at less cost, and with less change, generating real ROI quicker than any other solution. But don't just trust us. You know, we have over 40,000 proof points in our customers of every size, every industry, and every part of the world. As we discussed, you know, NetSuite goes to market by industry, and retail is one of our key sectors. Just in the last couple of years, we've invested a lot of resources in going deeper into retail, building out leading practices along with specific product features, customized roles, and reports that are available out of box on day one. And so all of this comes back to, you know, what's our next? NetSuite is not standing still. Uh, with the resources of Oracle, we're investing heavily into the NetSuite solution to ensure it's the most modern, flexible, relevant solution on the marketplace. Our next is more about Oracle investing heavily in our global infrastructure and product offerings. We're adding local offices in our, for our customers in 13 more countries. In order to support global business, we're adding six more data centers around the world. In order to develop even more capabilities, we're adding four more development centers. This is to help develop more industry, more products, 
and ultimately more capabilities, more success. Oops. <laughs> so with that background information on NetSuite behind us, um, I'd like to now introduce our, our customer, Point6. Uh, Point6 is a sustainable uh, maker of merino wool socks. It's my pleasure to introduce Drew Williams, the COO of um, Point6 and the Global Tactical Sales Manager. In these roles, Drew is uh, in NetSuite every day, using it to help him accomplish his job and deliver on his promises. As such, he brings a unique point of view to our conversation. I'm delighted that he's able to speak with us today. Thanks, Drew. Um, can, could you tell us about Point6, please? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'll start out by saying thanks to uh, Craig and Brianne for giving us uh, a platform to um, promote our business. It always helps to um, you know, hit all the touch points and promotions, and we appreciate it. Um, so, yeah, we are a, uh, a wholesale distributor of uh, Merino Wool Socks. Uh, we are family-owned and operated based out of uh, Steamboat Springs, Colorado. Um, our uh, founding owners, Peter and Patty Duke, actually brought merino wool um, really as a performance fiber to the outdoor industry um, back in the early 90s when they started a company uh, called Smart Wool and um, really brought the merino wool revolution uh, to the outdoor industry as, as a performance fiber and um, have continued that legacy with Point Six in terms of making the highest quality uh, outdoor, um, not only outdoor, but also tactical um, merino wool uh, socks that, that are out there. So I'll tell you a little bit about our company. We start from the beginning. Um, and the beginning for us is, is really the farmers. Um, no merino wool products without merino wool sheep farmers. And so, uh, they're uh, our, our beginning stage, right, of this cycle of making our products. And so they're raising these sheep, um, in some cases uh, raising other crops, uh, either uh, other animals or, um, you know, other crops uh, in terms of hay and such to feed the animals. So um, they're on the, uh, most of the farmers that we work with are on the South Island of New Zealand. Um, we also work with uh, farmers domestically as well here in the States um, to secure a very specific uh, merino wool um, that we need um, to make the product that we want to end up with. It all starts right here at the, at the farmer. And, um, and really the type and quality of merino wool that's coming off of the sheep. And so... Um, on the South Island of New Zealand, you can find a very uh, specific merino wool. Um, you can find a very specific quality, um, and you can find that quality in, um, in quantity. So it all comes together with the highest quality merino that we can find um, and the quantity we need to support our business. And so um, these farmers play a huge role. We, we know them personally. They have families just like ours. And we, we make sure that we're working directly with those farmers um, to have, give them the ability to secure a sustainable price, number one, um, so they don't have to deal with the fluctuations of the merino wool market. We actually, you know, want to work deals with the farmers directly to secure our crop and understand that we, we've got that secured um, for the future. Um, and, and we offer uh, the farmers a sustainable um, Price for those goods. So what happens there is we we create uh, a nice long-term partnership with these farmers where they know they have their wool sold. They're not interested in, or excuse me, not concerned about the commodity market and where wool might stand at, at, at that time. Um, Peter and Patty are both huge proponents of of quality, um, and I can't say enough about this in terms of um, the overall quality of our product. Um, we have the highest standards when it comes to type of wool we want, the farmers we're working with, uh, the animal welfare that goes into that in terms of um, on the farm with the merino wool farmers, how the sheep are raised. Um, then, you know, how do we take that 
um, all the way through the supply chain. So we're controlling our uh, supply chain throughout. And so there's very small things we do, uh, like um, compact spinning our yarn. And so uh, the yarn process takes a little bit more time, um, i.e. more money. Um, but that compact spinning is just a very small thing where uh, the traditional method of spinning yarn uh, leaves some fibers, some looser fibers, more uh, susceptible to pilling and uh, be a more scratchy, kind of bulky uh, yarn. The compact spinning of the yarn really has helped it in a variety of ways in terms of quality and performance. We see it really performing better when we test it. And uh, durability-wise, it holds up much better uh, over the long haul. Um, so one of the many things we we do to work with our suppliers um, throughout the uh, supply chain of the merino wool to make sure we're getting a product that's exactly um, what we want for uh, that end use product, which is a, a super durable quality sock. Um, we do things like the compact spinning, which you can see the difference between a ring spun and a compact spun um, strand of yarn kind of under a microscope on the right there. And there's also something that I wanted to touch on here. I'm not sure if it's on the slide, but um, we we actually plasma treat our wool, which is uh, uses a lot less. The super washing process of wool creates a wool that can be washed and dried just like any other garment. It won't shrink like uh, you know grandma's old sweater. So you don't have to be so delicate with it. You can you can essentially use it and wash it, dry it like any other garment in your home. And so. Uh, that's really, really helpful in terms of being able to sell wool, you know, beyond the kind of hot and scratchy um, kind of old school mentality of it. Um, the super washing process is a really big deal in making sure that the wool uh, can be easily cared for. And that plasma treatment process we use, um, we've just implemented because the standard super washing process is a highly uh, resource intensive process with water and chemicals. Uh, the plasma treatment process uses uh, far, far less water, um, and it's just a um, an electrical process. So it's using electricity, and that electricity is a sustainably sourced electricity from renewable sources. So it kind of brings it all together for us in terms of uh, what we try to do uh, in all aspects of our business, which is make it better. You know, are there better resources out there to do what we're doing? Um, create less um, negative impacts, create more positive impacts. That's what we're trying to do um, all throughout our supply chain and with, and with our products. I won't get too far into the details of our uh, SOC technology. Um, feel free to reach out if you have any questions after this. You can certainly reach out to me directly and I can answer um, all the SOC details that you would you'd have. Um, but, you know, just to touch on kind of the 10,000 foot view here, um, we've got a variety of knitting techniques, uh, how we uh, place the yarns and the socks uh, to create a, the most durable sock on the market. So not only is it durable, but it fits really well. Um, it, it has incredible breathability. And so uh, when you're talking about specific sport uh, cushioning, um, running or cycling or hiking or ski. We make socks very specific to those sports. You know, a, a runner is going to look for a sock that's very breathable, generally um, lightweight, ultra light, you know, less cushion than somebody that's uh, perhaps going on ski vacation and wants a nice, thick, warm, over the calf sock for their ski or snowboard boot. So, you know, we really have to make a sock specific to those. Um, those different categories for the folks that are are looking for a performance ski sock as opposed to a performance um, hiking or or running sock. And so, you know, how we knit that sock, um, all of the details that go into it, deep heel pockets, a, a, a seamless toe closure, all these small things that will just keep a sock up. Um, Lots of details, more details than I expected when I started in this business on 
um, what can make a, a really uh, great high quality performance uh, product. Uh, all of our socks are manufactured in the um, southeastern United States in the Chattanooga, uh, Tennessee area. We also have employees down there. Um, like I said, we're based in uh, Steamboat Springs, but our distribution is right down the street from our sock mill. So it works out really well in that uh, we are controlling that merino wool yarn supply throughout, and that's coming into our warehouse. So uh, we're able to supply yarns, and they're able to obviously give us some um, finished goods. And that's just a weekly process we do, um, you know, back and forth from the mill. So it's a it's a really nice um, setup there in terms of manufacturing to distribution. So it's a nice uh, short uh, walk for the product to get there and then get uh, to the um, in consumer hands. Um, you know, before I go on, our our mills are obviously very important partners. Um, these domestic mills are um, in the southeast, like I mentioned, in the Chattanooga area, and uh, they have a long history in apparel and textiles and hosiery. And um, it's really neat to see family-run businesses um, that have been around for 50 to 100 years um, and uh, really have kept up with the times, you know, uh, updated their equipment, gone from maybe um, – a more of a bulk uh, cotton white sock, um, you know, fruit of the loom contracts, if you will, to uh, specialty goods like ours. Those folks have really had to update equipment um, and really stay up on the latest and greatest technologies um, to make sure that they, they still have a market. And um, our mills have done a really great job of that, and they're fantastic partners to have. Um, great for product development. Um, great for um, partnerships that um, you know are are they're willing to really work with us as we we push them to get better they push us to get better so it's it's a really nice um, arrangement we have there um, we pride ourselves too in in having a lifetime guarantee on our product so um, if the sock wears out for any reason we get a lot of you know dogs chewing up socks you know accidents happen. We'll even replace those. Um, and our return rate last year was one one thousandth percent of our sales. And so we had a fantastic uh, return rate for um, our growth. Uh, we, I think, we can attribute that to the fact that we're making a, a high quality product that lasts. Um, you know, the we are obviously interested though in the, what does that end of life look like for our product. You know, uh, it's it's a great durable product. But it won't, you know, necessarily last forever, right? And so, what do we do with a product um, that comes back to us that has issues? What do we do with, um, you know, a, a sock that knits down halfway and then has some sort of blip on the machine? You've got all this uh, wonderful resources of this um, very high quality merino wool, um, all these uh, nice aspects there, but obviously not a complete sock. What do you do with them all? And so, those are questions. We are asking in terms of what are we doing with the, the what's what we call waste right now that's coming off the machines. What do we do with the returns? And the great thing about merino wool is it actually can be broken down and and upcycled um, really easily. And so um, a lot of the uh, soundproofing in vehicles, uh, woolen blankets, pressed woolen blankets. Um, there's there's a huge variety of um, uses um, for merino wool um, at that kind of end of life cycle stage. So for socks that are um, returned or if it's um, waste we're looking at, uh, there's a lot of uses there. So what we've been able to do is partner up with um, our mills and then um, with uh, some end of user resources that are able to recycle um, all of our waste uh, and all of our uh, warranty returns, and they make things like humanitarian relief blankets um, for uh, folks um, uh, that are in disasters, disaster relief, uh, um, homeless, um, uh, military uses, Boy Scouts. So we're able to take all of those, um, those waste materials and um, 
and uh, really utilize those, uh, give them a second life and something we're really proud of that we've um, partnered up with our, our mills and they've been really responsive and helpful on that. We also have stocks that, you know, get messed up. Let's say somebody uses the wrong color or something. Man, yeah, they, they don't look great, but it's still a great product that has a lot of value. And so what we do with those is if we've got, you know, socks not matching, just part of manufacturing, you're always going to have those uh, loose ends. And we try to keep it to a minimum, obviously. But we'll um, bail up those socks. And actually, um, with the latest disasters that have happened, we'll just send a slew of socks. Maybe they don't match, right, or, or um, uh, but they're still high quality good. And we'll just uh, give them to the folks in need. And so we've been able to find a lot of um, – really great uses for um, all of those things that would generally be seen as uh, perhaps waste. Um, so really proud of that. And, um, you know, really brings our product full circle in terms of looking at the whole life cycle of our product from beginning to end. You know, we're also really proud of our, um, you know, of partnerships that we have, creating that positive change that we'd like to see in the world. Um, you know, our business is very much based on open spaces, um, um, very much based on the ability to access those open spaces for people and to enjoy those open spaces. So, you know, when you're focused on hikers, skiers, uh, mountain biking, road biking, um, you know, these are all based on kind of getting out there and getting outside. And so when we link up with these organizations, we have the ability to give back to those things that we care about, you know, maintaining, preserving, um, these precious places. You know, we've got a whole sock line that we've set up with uh, National Forest Foundation, Trout Unlimited, um, the Continental Divide Trail Coalition, the, the Pacific Crest Trail Association, um, and others. And what we're doing is selling those socks and actually giving back to those organizations that are doing really, you know, the heavy lifting in um, outdoor conservation work. So they're doing a great job on educating the public on you know, best practices, um, or just actually getting out there and really doing trail work and conservation work. Um, you know, we're, we're, by selling the products, we're, we're helping to kind of push those funds to them to be able to support their organizations to get that work done. Um, so they're a very impart, important part of the business. Um, they, they do a great job of helping us promote the brand, um, but they also are doing the work that, you know, uh, is really important to our industry um, in terms of making sure that those places um, stay clean, um, stay conserved and preserved um, for, for the next generations. Uh, you know, NetSuite does run our, our business platform um, so we can run, you know, the sock business. We We are dealing in the Raw material supply, we're dealing with um, uh, product development and, uh, you know, all the things that come with um, getting that product um, to our consumer base. And uh, we, we're, we're as, you know, a small business at its best, you know, small family-run business. We don't have a huge ID department. Um, we don't have necessarily the resources to be kind of maintaining our our operational system as, as a, a kind of an offshoot. And so it's very helpful to, you know, really have a, a real real time look at our business. And, and that's for everybody. What's so nice about it is that, it, you know, uh, someone that's in a, a marketing role or production role um, with a lot of the reporting and a lot of the ways that we come together as a group and a team using NetSuite, um, we're able to kind of, keep an eye and understand the budget and the, and the you know, challenges and goals of, of the other folks, and then really have the transparency within the business to understand where everything's at, you know, not, not necessarily where my little piece of the pie is at, but kind of where the business at uh, as a whole is. Um, and so that's, that's really important for us uh, to understand um, you know, where we're going kind of together as a team. Very helpful for us to understand that, you know, we're, we're all on the same path together. Um, and a lot of the um, functionality within NetSuite helps us do that. 
so what, what's next for point six? Um, we're growing and uh, doing well. The you know our our consumer base in the outdoor industry and, and um, in the tactical and military world, they respond very very well to high quality gear because when you're relying on um, these items um, to get you kind of safely from point A to point B, uh, whether it's skiing in the backcountry or going on a, a long hike, you know one of these through hikes uh, in America could take you three months, right? Um, or if you're being uh, deployed into a war zone, uh, or if you're on the streets every day as a police officer or a firefighter, uh, really relying on your gear to make sure you're staying safe, you know? Socks are, are an important element of that, um, keeping your foot healthy and, um, you know, healthy inside that food is a very, very important element of, of staying safe and, and making sure you can get um, whatever it is that you're um, trying to accomplish done. And so, um, you know, the the product has done really well, been very well received, um, and we're looking to expand our lines, um, working on other accessories, um, gloves, hats, um, looking at apparel as well. And so it's a really exciting time for us um, to be growing in the industry. Um, we're excited about kind of what's next for us and what's next in the industry. The industry is growing as well, and the dynamics in the industry are changing. The retail landscape um, for the outdoor industry, just like many industries, is changing. Uh, Big dynamic change there. So it's always great for us. um, As a small business, uh, we're able to be very flexible and very dynamic with these changes. So um, when our retailers have needs, very important retail partners, other family-run businesses here in the States and abroad. Um, it's really important for us to link up with those retailers and make sure that we're really helping them to sell through the product um, to their um, partners, uh, their regional partners, their regional consumers. So um, we're excited about where the industry going, is going and where Point Six is going as well. So, Craig, that's it for me. Um, I know you wanted to take over for questions, I believe. Thank you very much, Drew. That uh, that journey you walked us through from the from the wool farmers in New Zealand through the um, through the mills in in the southeast, sort of the traditional heart of American apparel, and um, out to your consumers and the, all the conservancy work you're doing. Just a a fascinating story. I'm a, I'm an outdoor, avid outdoor um, uh, person myself, and and as such, these those kinds of things are are important to me as a consumer. And I know that they're they're very important to um, a lot of the, my peers in the in the outdoor arena as well. But extremely important. And um, you know the the whole thing about it, it strikes me from a sustainability standpoint. Um, Point six seems to be out there on the on on the cusp or the leading edge of of um, building a completely sustainable supply chain from from the source right through the uh, consumer to the high quality uh, durability warranty returns and and even what you're doing in terms of um, donating waste and returns uh, for for repurposing the, the fibers for other things and. Um, that whole topic of sustainability and really the ethics of supply chain is has become uh, in in recent years more and more important uh, to um, apparel brands and outdoor retail brands, particularly as supply chains have become more global and there's more contract manufacturers involved. And um, it's very easy for a, a, a clothing brand to lose sight of parts of their supply chain to the extent that they may not be able to uh, uh, clearly understand specifically where each product came from. And, and uh, you know, from what I've, I've heard that um, you folks are doing that in spades. So I, I, I just wanted to focus on one question, and I'm, I'm going to ask that now. Um, for the rest of the audience, uh, please feel free to use the Q&A button on your screen to send in any questions you might want to ask. Um, of Drew and myself, and we'll be we'll be happy to answer those. Um, I can see those questions as they pop up. So um, while uh, Drew and I are talking about the sustainability thing, please please feel free and 
and don't hesitate to uh, to ask us some questions. Um, so, and I think you alluded to this quite well in your presentation, but how, how does NetSuite help you at point six build, maintain, and promote that sustainable business business initiative that you know, from what I heard from you, is is, is part and parcel to your founders philosophy for how to come to market and uh, can, can sure. you elaborate on that a little bit yeah absolutely craig yeah this is um i'm glad you asked that because this is uh this is what i love about the business this is uh definitely what i'm passionate about so um yeah peter and patty are both um uh very focused on the quality of goods, uh, which is um, a huge deal. And, and the, the way we create a more quality good is um, what we've touched on before in terms of those aspects of understanding that um, raw material supply all the way from the, the first stages all the way to, you know, when, when the product breaks down, what are we going to do with that, right? Or we have all this waste off of the knitting machines. What are we going to do with it? And so when we can answer those questions, um, great. And we have done that. We've done a great job of partnering up with these folks that can help us achieve those goals of creating a more uh, clean processing for our wool, for example, or um, uh, creating a, you know, um, humanitarian relief blankets with the, with the scrap materials. And so those partners are important, but then the next step would be, okay, now how are we going to kind of set a baseline for how we're doing and where we're going? And so that's where NetSuite comes into play. So anything that comes back to us as a, a warranty, you know, those are all, even from a customer service standpoint, um, those are all uh, taken care of through NetSuite. So we understand what happened um, with the product, what went wrong. We can re see recurring issues there by simple reporting tools, right? And so we see those returns come in. We are um, uh, putting those in, in NetSuite. Uh, and understanding, hey, what was it? What was the problem? How do we fix it? And so then you can actually put numbers on, okay, how are we doing, um, you know, over time? What are we seeing as our return rate? Um, are we seeing recurring issues, et cetera? Um, same thing with the material supply. So all that material supply coming in all goes through NetSuite. NetSuite is the touch point to control that supply um, and control it to our, our mills, it's kind of the end user there. Um, so we're using it to control that, um, that will supply. Obviously, products, uh, that goes unsaid. Uh, maybe it doesn't here, but we're, we're using um, uh, to control our, our entire inventory uh, and make sure that our inventory is, is trackable and uh, transparent and we understand where everything's at and uh, how many we got. That's important. Um, and then also, we've, we've actually uh, recently implemented uh, the waste that's coming in. We're actually bringing that into our warehouse to understand the pounds uh, of waste or the pounds of, of socks that we would be giving away. We're doing it on a pound per pound basis, but we're understanding that now and understanding how much that is. Are we getting better? Obviously, we just want to waste less um, instead of trying to upcycle it as the number one goal. So are, are we wasting less, wasting more? Are we making more irregular, if you will, socks or, or less? Um, all important things to watch and, and to monitor and make sure, you know, not only that we're getting better with this stuff, but our mills are getting better. How can we help them get better? Um, and, and back to product, uh, the product, you know, that we are selling and then giving proceeds back um, to those folks, to those partners. Obviously, all that sales data, uh, all the reporting that goes into um, paying those folks, uh, all the reporting that goes into our sales tracking of those items, it's all in NetSuite as well. And so, you know, all of those items um, that we do to make our company a more sustainable operation um, all have their touch points, obviously, in NetSuite. Thanks for that. Um, that you know, in a word, that's, that's proud. Um, sort of makes my my chest puff up a little to know that uh, NetSuite plays plays a role in that, and uh, uh, super impressive. You know, we've got a couple questions from the audience that I'd like to to serve up so that the whole group can uh, can hear the answers. The first one is um, a clarification question that I've already answered, and I'll just read the question off and answer it. And then there's a couple that are I think addressed specifically to you, Drew. So the first question is. What is the back-end ERP system Point Six is running on? 
or is NetSuite a holistic solution? And and, and I, I just answered that, but I want to I want to make sure that reinforce the point to the whole group. Um, NetSuite is a holistic platform, and it provides all of the elements to run um, to run Point Six or any other any other company, whether you're doing just wholesale distribution or um, e-commerce and uh, brick and mortar point of sale systems and stores, uh, the whole nine yards, B2B, B2C, we cover all of those business elements, including the financials. So it is a complete platform solution. And as we, as I alluded to in the presentation, if there are um, specific business area functionalities that we don't address directly on our platform, um, we partner with Built for NetSuite Solutions um, to provide those specific um, um, specific areas of functionality. And if you think about it, um, no one piece of software can do everything for everybody all the time, everywhere. It's just it's not possible. And so uh, it's kind of like I, I, it's kind of like your smartphone. Um, the smartphone does what it does great. It's, it's a data machine. It's a telephone. Um, but it can't do everything that we would like to do on it. So we um, we download built for um, applications for that particular phone, whether it's an iPhone or an Android-based phone, and those point solutions extend the capabilities of our of our smartphone. And in much the same way, the NetSuite developer community extends the capabilities of our package. However, they're still on NetSuite when they do that. So hopefully, I've, I've addressed that question. Um, the next question that, that was asked is, you know, this is to you, Drew, and Point Six. What are the, what are your biggest demand planning and forecasting issues, and does NetSuite help you in this arena? Sure. Um, I'd say right now, just with the dynamics of the industry, um, planning and forecasting. Um, the biggest issues that we have is just dynamics changing in the market, and and just in general for our like point um, of, of, of goods, I think it is as well, where we're getting much more um, new dealer. We're getting a, a, a big dealer base that's opening up for us in a variety of, of marketplaces out there, not just the outdoor industry. Um, and their demand is, is what we call at once. And so how do you demand for, or excuse me, how do you plan for the demand that you don't know is coming necessarily it's new de new dealers were opening up uh, the the demand that just comes from people selling through more quickly than they expected you know bad planning whatever it may be we're getting that at once demand is really picking up and so what we'll look at um, in terms of what we use um, we have a really robust planning and forecasting tool that gives us a bunch of different uh, dynamic looks at our inventory position but we look out kind of month to month at just the demand that's already on the books. And then we also look at what was our our um, at once volume and how is that growing year to year. All things we can we can see in that suite. So we look at the um, kind of last year, last two years, see what kind of growth we're seeing in those areas and see how to match it with um, just basically having you know, just in time inventory, right? So just having the right amount of inventory sitting there to meet the demand that you don't necessarily have planned. Um, and we've been doing a great job of that, really stocking in in a way that is against our best sellers or whatever it may be. Um, again, things where we see what is the best seller, uh, how did it sell at once versus the pre-booked or pre-season orders. We sell that in NetSuite so we can understand, okay, um, this is where we need to stock more heavily to make sure we're, we're meeting that um, at once demand. Thank you for that. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense, and it really highlights, in, in my mind, the, the traditional apparel demand planning challenge that really mixes science and art, and that, you know, it's, it can be uh, very difficult to anticipate the changes in tastes regarding styles and color combinations and things like that. And what, what's applicable this year could vanish in six months to a year and new tastes and norms appear. And that's, that's really the art of apparel demand planning. And um, um, typically, machines aren't going to replace that art and magic. If you like to think about that, that's where 
uh, folks like Point Six really um, apply their business acumen and, and years and years of experience in the business to help to help forecast that. And then there's the the science part of seeing okay, we have um, a spike in business to business demand, and we need to uh, make sure that we're queued up for that. So um, thanks for covering those areas off with us. Um, the uh, a follow-on question to that is. You know what is that for robust forecasting tool that you're using? Is that is that are you leveraging uh, the specific features of NetSuite? Is that a built-for application, or is it something that you folks are doing on the ground trip? Sure, um, it's kind of a if I'm reading that right, it's kind of a mix of the two. So we it's definitely homegrown from where its roots came from. Um, we were running it basically out of Excel before NetSuite. Um, on the old system. What we've done is brought that completely into NetSuite. Um, it was a built for uh, basically a, 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 a search, um, uh, a, a reporting tool in NetSuite um, that we have built, and it's a, a customized search that has a bunch of scripting run into it, et cetera. I don't need to get too much of the details, but basically it shows you know, our demand and supply running out um, forever and ever and um, pulls down, you know, those touch points on each item that we would like to see. So it worked very well, except for that it was based out of Excel in the past. And what we were able to do, with, you know, a lot of ease was just essentially build that into the NetSuite application. Uh, thanks for that. And from my own experience, um, with uh, a, a good portion of the, uh, you know, apparel-related customers that NetSuite deals with, by far and away, um, and I think this is true the world over, across the business landscape, but certainly in the area that I operate in, um, Excel is the uh, number one business application in the world, ironically. Um, and it has all the problems that we associate with silos and um, the difficulty in an exchange and information, et cetera, and yet um, we all know how to use it. So being able to uh, work with Excel-related data, consume that into the application, take advantage of it, um, provide results through those saved searches you mentioned, and then um, uh, provide a response back out to those, in this case, an, an Excel spreadsheet, perhaps pivot tables, et cetera, is part and parcel to the capabilities of the NetSuite platform. And we can really help retailers sort of take that um, um, their sort of secret sauce in their demand planning and bring it into NetSuite and automate um, parts of it so that it becomes uh, easier to consume for the whole business. We have time for probably um, one more question here, and this is um, also related to point six. And it's, it, I think the question, if, if I can summarize it, is um, help us understand uh, what departments um, are using NetSuite at point six, and you know, can you give us an idea of the size of sort of your user community? Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, we're a small business. We have 12 employees at the moment, but growing, which is awesome. Um, and essentially, everybody utilizes NetSuite, and so if you're talking uh, our finance manager when we're dealing with budgets, um, just back-end finances, human resources, um, Dean is fantastic and she handles all that and she's obviously in NetSuite every day. Um, our CEO, Peter, uh, uses NetSuite uh, to look at those high level, where are we at, where are we going, um, uh, KPIs and reports, um, uh, our marketing, PR, um, sending out orders to all the different magazines, PR agencies, um, also sending out um, those uh, marketing messages. Those um, all go through NetSuite as well. Um, when you start talking production, obviously a, a huge, uh, all the product and um, forecasting product being built is all there in NetSuite. So uh, production planning is heavily involved. Customer service, all of our warranty cases come through. That customer service platform, they're, they're made as cases on our website and drive into NetSuite. Um, so we're handling all of our customer relations through there with both our retail staff, our retail staff that's calling in and placing orders, and then just direct to consumer uh, orders as well. Um, our warehouse staff, uh, we've got three guys down in Chattanooga, 
at our distribution facility. Um, they're using it uh, daily, obviously. Uh, all their orders out, uh, all of our shipping um, providers, FedEx, UPS, um, USPS, they're all connected within the system, so all of our shipping is happening out of NetSuite. Um, and so cycle counting, keeping up with the inventory, uh, product in, yarn out, yarn in, uh, all those things are being taken care of uh, through the NetSuite platform at our distribution facility as well. So there's nobody in our company uh, that's not utilizing the system on a, on a daily basis. I, I just have to say that, you know, to, to see all of what you're doing, um, to um, personally even use the products that you create, uh, the fact that you do all of this with 12 people, um, blows me away. So thanks, thanks for that. And it, it's time for us to wrap up the call. So I would like to uh, uh, thank you, Drew, once again for um, joining us today. I know from my part, I was um, fascinated to to hear you tell the story of your company. And um, again, it makes me very proud to to understand how you're using our solution to help run your business. So um, thanks once more. And uh, yeah, thanks, to Greg. everyone who joined. Yeah, thank you. And uh, to all of you who joined in the audience, I would really like to thank you as well for uh, joining us and the questions that you were able to submit to us really, um, you know, helped advance our conversation. And uh, hopefully you got a lot of value out of this. And I look forward to being able to follow up with any of you who want to uh, take the discussion to the next step. And uh, once again, I'd like to thank you all, and uh, we'll wrap it up. Thanks, everyone. A copy of this webinar recording will be emailed to you in the next few days. That concludes today's webinar. Have a great day. Thanks again. Bye-bye.